scriptures to that. That's all right with you all. Amen. If I start getting a little boring to you, it's a bishop to that. Amen. But I want to share a word with you tonight. Amen. Matthew 5.13. I'm going to share a few scriptures and I'm going to go right into my text and my teaching for tonight. It says, you are the stall of the earth. Yes. Saul has lost his savior. Wherewith shall we be salted? It is this forth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be tried under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. The city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle or put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light unto all that are in their house. Let your light shine before men. They may see your good works, glorify the Father, which is in heaven. Turn it over quickly, amen. 7.15 of Matthews. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are wolves. You should know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down, yes. cast into the fire. Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. Turning over real quick, amen, to the Matthews. I'm going to admit that one. I really have to fruit right now. Matthew, Luke, the ninth chapter. And he said to them, 23rd verse, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, deal, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same yes. shall save him. Yes. Yes. What is a man advantaged if he gave the whole world to himself or be cast away? Whosoever shall be ashamed of me, my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. And when he shall come in his glory and his fathers and the holy angels, but I tell you of the truth, there are some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Last scripture, last verse, and I'm done with reading for this evening. Ninth chapter, 57th verse, and it came to pass that as they went their way, certain men said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, son of man have not. Lay his head. Said to another, Follow me. He said, Lord, I suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead. Yes. Go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home in my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, look at that fit for the kingdom of God. Today I want to talk to you from a couple of different thoughts tonight. First thought I want to talk to you is from as well done. The second thought I want to talk to you about is on no certain terms. Third thought I want to talk to you about souls, the lost cause. The ultimate objective of a believer is to hear the Lord say, well done. Yes. If you come to the church on Sunday, Wednesday, Friday nights, if you are true tithe, if you are true to your prayer and your Bible studies. Now, I know there's a lot of folk in there. I don't care what. I, the church don't mean nothing to me as far as the structure of building. Because, amen, you can be in the biggest church there is in your city and still go to hell. Right. You can be in a box church where you have five people, amen, and wind up 
they may have sitting with crowns on your head in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. I've come to realize, amen, that your place and your position in God is not based on the position or the edifice of your church. Amen, but the reality of our walk with God, amen, is ultimately, amen, I don't care who you are, where you come from, denomination-wise, don't really mean that much. You want to hear God say, well done. Well done. Amen. There's not to be a criteria by which God judges us or evaluates us that's going to put us in a position where God is going to say, well done. There's got to be something, amen, that God is looking for in us to help us, amen, be judged or evaluated on that day. And I want us to understand something, amen. The first phase of our walk with God that's going to put us in a place to hear God say, well done, is first and foremost, you've got to be saved. Yes. yes. Amen. You just can't be saved, amen, just based on confession. Because we've got a lot of folk, amen. I don't care where you come from, amen. Everybody has the proclaimments, the proclamation that they say. But I don't understand how folks say, amen, you're still doing the same things you did, amen, when you first came to the church. The Bible says, amen, in the book of Corinthians, it said, come out from amongst them. Amen. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but Reprove them. Now watch yes. this now. Amen. I understand, amen, when the Bible was talking to us in the book of Romans, Bishop. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, Romans 12, amen, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Amen. So therefore, when you came to Jesus just as you were, God already knew, amen, that you had some flaws in your character. Yes. He knew, amen, you had some stuff that he needed to fix, amen. He knew you had some stuff, amen, that you needed to get out. We had some hookups. We had some hangups. All kind of stuff was going on in our life. Contrary to popular opinion, we got some stuff going on in our life right now. Right now. Right. And God working on it. Hello, yeah. somebody. But there should be something, amen, that we can say or that should be said about us 5, 10, 15 years from now where folk will look back and say, I remember when they should be still saying the same thing about you now that they were saying about you 10 years ago. So a change in your life. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, you possess your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Be not conformed to the world, but be changed. God is an agent of change. At the end of the day, amen, when you get to the place, amen, where God's prepared to evaluate you, guess what? You're still going to have some stuff in your life. There will be some things, amen, that God's still looking at and see he winking at, amen? Because, amen, while God is working on you, he's preparing you, amen, for, for heaven. Jesus, let, me, let me talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're going to do some work while you're here on earth, but ultimately God is preparing you for we're trying to go to heaven. That's the ultimate goal. Yeah. I want to make it to heaven. Yes. So while I'm here on earth, Jesus said that we are a, 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 a light yes. that shines on a hill that people are in darkness look to to come out of darkness. Yes. Yes. I said souls are a lost cause. Jesus. Everybody, amen, that preacher, amen, God, amen, they call the preach. Right. That's what you say. Preacher, they amen, they ain't even called right. because they, 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 got, they got DDs and bachelors and bachelors and degrees. That don't make way. you a competent or qualified right. preacher. Right. Now, I don't care how good you preach. You can go even to the school and buy a sermon. Yeah, yeah. man. If you, you, you learn how to read good enough, you can read That's the sermon right. good enough to make people want to jump, jump. That's right. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you know the text that you're preaching about. That don't mean, amen, that you got a word from the Lord. Right. All that means, amen, you mastered reading a scripture or a sermon. Hello, somebody. But, amen, when you really spend some time with God, amen, that you allow God, amen, to begin to work on you. God begin to root out and implement stuff into your spirit yes. and into your character. Then will come some times in your life, amen, you won't want to give up on God. Then because sometimes you want to want to stop going to church. Then will come some time in your life, amen. You gonna to want to stop even praising God. Then, yeah. If you ain't never been there, keep on serving the Lord. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. The folk that really serve God, amen. They've been there for a little while. Oh, they have been in those stages already. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, amen. Amen. If you ain't been there long enough, amen. If you ain't served God long enough, amen. Keep on serving Him, but look at serve Him, amen, in sincerity. Because when you're sincere about God, even, it hurts you worse. And folk who really don't care less. Folk who really don't care less, amen, because when they want to come, they go when they want to go. They do what they want to do. You know it is. Amen. And what do they do? It don't really matter to them when they rise or fall. 
It, it, it is not, it's not just happening in small churches. That was a big church. Thank you, Jesus. If, 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 you're, if you're so impressed by, amen, the size of the sanctuary, if you're so impressed, amen, by, amen, how the edifice looks on the outside or the inside, if you're impressed by the number of people in their choir, amen, then go to their church, amen, on a Sunday morning. Go there, amen, on a Sunday night. Yes. Go there on a Wednesday oh, night, on a Friday yeah. night. They may have 5,000 members oh, in the church on a Sunday morning, but they might have about 50 on a Thursday or Wednesday yes. or Friday night. Right. If you do math, amen, it's the same equivalent. Because in reality, at the end of the day, man, the Bible says, Trade is the gate that leads to eternal life. And few there be that find it. Yes. Now, our problem, amen, is this, amen, that we made an agreement with God. Say a song back in the old church, I made uh -huh. a vow to the Lord. Yes. I made a vow yes. to the Lord. I promised him I'd go every step of the way. And I made a vow to the Lord. Ecclesiastes 5 said, Amen, it's better for a man, Amen, not to make a vow than to make a vow and not honor your vow. Now, our problem this week, brother, is we've made an agreement with God under no certain terms. If you sign a contract, you want to know even the terms of your contract. Yes. But well, you made an agreement with God, and there were no certain terms. I reminded him of the young men, amen, that were hungry. And they came, amen, to the vineyard in the early morning hour. Amen. And the man said, look at him, he said, we're hungry, amen, and we haven't eaten all day. Amen. Can, can we labor in your vineyard? And, and the owner of the place said, look at him, whatever. He said, you go ahead in there, whatever's good, at the end of the day, I'm going to pay you. Yes. And so they began to labor my daughter in the vineyard. And they labored all day. And you remember, then toward the end of the day, there was some more outstanding folk. Yes. yes. They were hungry, man. They were destitute of life's goods. And they seen what was going on. So look here, I know the day is almost spent. He said, but look here, can we labor in your vineyard? Amen. Right. Because, amen, because we're hungry. And we want to be filled. Amen. He said, look here, I tell you what you want to do. Amen. I know the day is about over. But go ahead in the vineyard and labor. And at the end of the hour, whatever's good, I'm going to pay you. Now watch this. I'm going to show you, amen, the, the analogy here. Because we got some folk right here in the church. Amen. They're saved and sanctified and filled with God's precious spirit and won't share nothing they got about God with nobody. Right. You'll come to church on Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, and come back on Sunday again and will never tell nobody anything about Jesus. Those that came even in the first hour worked hard all day. And at the end of the day, preaching, they received one might. One. Those that came at the end of the day might not work as hard as those that came at the beginning of the day. But at the end of the day, they received one might. One might. Yeah, I know even the ones that worked all day, they were a little raw. Yeah. It's all up, man. There's something wrong here. You mean to tell me we worked all day long? And you give us one mic, and this guy coming at the last hour and get the same pay? Do we not agree? We had no certain terms. Right. All I told you that I was going to pay you. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day, just as long as you get your soul feel. Yes. You want to be satisfied with all y'all scared to talk to me. But the problem with a lot of us is today is we get hung up. I heard my wife talking even today, even we were even we traveling, and she was saying about uh, this preacher that was in our town. And he was a regular in this area, but they say every time this guy comes into our town, amen, he is such a renowned prophet, amen, that when he comes, amen, to do a revival, amen, he winds up staying in our area for months and months at a time because people, amen, will call him, amen, to continue staying in the area because they enjoy him so much, amen. Amen. And you know how it is, amen. You got folk, amen, they won't even come to church on Thursday and Friday night, amen, when the prophet ain't here. But soon as the prophet comes to town and they think he's going to tell you something that you already heard, they'll go stay him. They'll travel five hours away oh, yes. just to hear word yes. from the prophet. Man, 
at the end of the day, man, you got to understand something. Prophecy is only as good as your faith. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Prophecy can tell you all the good stuff he won't tell you. But if you ain't got enough faith, they may believe that God can. Prophecy just went on death ears. Because, amen, you can hear words from a preacher, amen, against it, there's a prophet, amen, I'm not renouncing prophecy. You, what I'm trying to get you to understand, amen, is not the prophet, amen, it's the word that come out of the prophet's mouth and the faith that you have, amen, in conjunction with what you heard. And I don't know about you all, amen, but at the end of the day, after I've toiled all these days and all these years, yes. I don't want to be selfish. I remember, amen, back when I was a young man in Jersey, amen, I was trying to get rich quick, preacher. And they had this thing called the pyramid. So what you had to do with the pyramid, amen, you had to go out there and meet as many people as you can trying to build your company, help somebody. Amen. And what happens is the more people you get under you, amen, that were prepared to work, the higher you were supposed to go in this organization. Amen. They say, amen, the higher you go in the organization, the more money you're supposed to make, right? Well, amen, I begin to think about that pyramid process, amen. I begin to think about how, amen, you can take the process of a pyramid, amen, that we use, amen, to try to make money and use it in the kingdom of God. Because, amen, in the kingdom of God, amen, we've got to understand that each and every one of us, amen, have so many souls, amen, that are at our hands. There's people in this world right now that I'll never reach. There's people out there, amen, their lives will never be changed, amen, just because they hear Greg Moody preach, amen. But guess what? You've got a future in you. Right. You got a word in you. You got right. something, amen, that people are looking at right. and looking for. Why? Because you are the salt of their earth, amen. You are the light of their world. They are the ones, amen, that you know they help somebody. They're looking at you, amen, because you are the one, amen, that gives them hope. All right. Amen. Amen. If you're not, amen, walking the Bible, say amen, amen, you will know them by fruit that they bear. If you ain't, if you ain't bearing no good fruit, amen, then you need to focus straight. Because even the Bible said, even if the blind man leads the blind, they're both going to fall right in the yes. ditch. You got folk that's doing that. Why do you do that, Bishop? Because even most folk want to follow the easy road. Folk think, amen, that serving God ain't that it's an easy road. I got news for you. Serving God ain't no easy road. No easy road. Amen. There is no easy road with Jesus. Jesus said, as I suffer, you want to arm yourself likewise. There's no certain terms with God. So therefore, when Jesus was talking to even in that latter phase, he said, look, he said, one man said, I'm going to come follow you. But Lord, first let me go home, amen, amen. Take a well, farewell to my family. So again, anyone, amen, that's prepared, amen, amen, that's fit for the kingdom. So we'll go bury my father, look at the dead buried today. But if you're going to follow Jesus, amen, you got to be prepared. That when you follow Jesus, you got to know, amen, that there's something or anything, amen, that can happen, it will happen. We call that Murphy's Law. Anything that's possible, capable of happening, will happen. And you don't know when or where or how it's going to happen, but with God, anything is capable of happening at any time. And what you that, Pastor, I mean, amen, you can be serving God, you can be paying your tithes, you can be in church on every Sunday, you can be in church on every Wednesday, amen, you can be there every service on Friday night, you can be faithful in witnessing and sharing Jesus with people, and the more you do the right thing, the worse things get in your life, amen. But you I can know, amen, that's all a part of your agreement with God, amen. I look at quite a few of God's characters, amen. And as I begin to look at the characters in the Bible, I realize, amen, that even the characters in the Bible, David, Gideon, amen, Deborah, Ruth, amen, old boy Joseph, all those guys, amen, they were patriots of God. And all those yes. ones, amen, they were conformed, amen, and committed to doing a work for the Lord, amen. And don't you know, even with their commitments and conforming, amen, to trying to do a work in the will of God, amen, they experienced some times in their life, amen, that they had to go through some trauma and some drama. And I want you to understand something, amen, if you're going to hear the Lord say, well done, you got to come to grips with reality, that there are no certain terms with God. Amen. And the real losers here are going to be souls. Why? Because there are some souls out there, amen, that's looking for somebody that's prepared to stand up. The souls are looking for somebody that has a message, amen. They don't want to hear how they can get rich, amen, but somebody needs to be healed. We got some folk in the house right now, and they're struggling.
suffering with all kinds of illnesses yes. and they want to know if God is able to heal them. I heard the text say, is there a bomb in Gilead? <laughs> and I don't understand if you I don't know if you understand the concept. But when he said a bomb in Gilead, what he was talking about was the term bomb means a medicine. It talks about a prescription, something even that you can use that will fix your situation. Something that you can use that will change what's happening in your life. And sometimes we associate a situation with being physical. But don't you know you got some people that's in the world and they're in the church. And they got some sickness in them that needs to be healed. And I'm not talking about uh, sugar diabetes. Uh, because I know uh, that we serve a God. Uh, he is able uh, to heal uh, sugar diabetes. Uh, but sometimes uh, we don't need God uh, to heal sugar diabetes. Uh, because I stop by here uh, to let you know uh, that you ain't going to glory uh, with sugar diabetes.
come to the place where it really doesn't matter anymore. I got a new mama that I got something down inside me. 